rather, will most likely come to an end. So it sets up a very intriguing final 12 minutes of football from McKinney ISD Stadium. Rosper on the move. They trail Geyer by seven in the Class 6A Division II state quarterfinals. CW33 High School Football Showdown is brought to you by your North Texas Chevy dealers. We're going to find the perfect treat. We're going skating. We're going to Nanos. Wherever you go this holiday, Chevy can help you get there. Which is why we're making our Chevy employee discount available to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. So wherever you go, happy holidays from Chevy. Use the Chevy employee discount for everyone to get over $6,800 below MSRP on this Equinox. Get the Chevy employee discount for everyone today. America, break free from 2020. Now through January 7th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. $10 a month, no commitment. 2020 is over. Start 2021 with tons of ways to get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. And spread out while you work out with cardio distancing and our new crowd meter. Plus, use our app to get moving anywhere. Your fitness is essential, so kick things off with the year's best deal. Join for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, deal ends January 7th. Love lower than low prices? Then get more ways to save at Kroger, where you can find personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. All for prices that are lower than low. On food that's fresher than fresh. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fourth quarter set to begin at McKinney ISD Stadium. Doug Anderson, Ladera McLean, and Chris Mikowski with you as Geyer leads Prosper by seven. But the Eagles are on the move at the Wildcat 35 yard line. Hand off Jacob Devaney. Devaney will pick up a couple. Carson Parham with the tackle. Boy, he's had a nice game today also. I know he's been overshadowed. Uh, Cooper Lance and Jordan Eubanks and company, but tell you, number 11 has played a fantastic ball game at that next level of the defense. He's been playing the middle linebacker and been shifting him inside and outside from time to time, but he's made a good game in the middle. Devaney falls forward for a first down, about five yards on the run. And, you know, Carson Parham and Brooks Etheridge at that middle linebacker spot, they've been forced into duty because the starting middle linebacker, Brain Vallejo, out with a concussion. And that was a guy that had over 40 tackles coming into this game today. He's out, so Etheridge and Parham have to step up. They've done a pretty nice job. They've done a fantastic job, and it's not easy to defend against these Eagles, but they have done an admirable job here this afternoon. Pass near side to Billings inside the 20 yard line. 12 yard gain for Noah Billings and a first down as Prosper enters the red zone. Yeah, they just got the momentum now. You see guys flying all over the place in the white uniforms. And now you saw Jacob Devaney. He's the guy out lead blocking. He's your starting running back, but he makes a fantastic block that allowed the receiver to get the additional yards to get the first down. Tyler Bailey, bottom of the screen. Cameron Harpole up top. Now Harpole comes in motion near side while Barry will take it. Finds a hole through the middle at the 10-yard line. Penalty flags thrown. And now the hat is thrown by the side judge as Harpole. And Darius Goodlow got into it on the sideline. Oh, the pressure of Texas high school football state playoffs is starting to show off here in the, in the fourth quarter. I know what that's all about. It's getting a little chippy. Ricky Heron will talk things over with his crew. That was a good run by Barry. As he went inside the 10 yard line. But they have to sort the penalty flags out first. Right. 
Ricky Heron still getting the clarification. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Prosper, number nine. Unsportsmanlike conduct, Geyer, number one. Those fellas were offset. The down will count. The result of the play is a second down. Well, quarterback design run. You bring Jacob Mummy. He's the lead blocker. Nice run here by Jackson Berry. Stop by Jaden Jaden Fugit, just a yard shy of the first down. But the unsportsmanlike was on the guy or sideline where Cameron Harpole went out of bounds with Darius Goodlow, and the two continued to tussle after the play. Second down and one. Devaney goes in motion. Barry will keep it. Picks up the first down and tackled at the seven yard line. <laughs> Not by much, though. Boy, just barely. Oh, you, you, this play had some promise to it and a lot of promise, but this defense can run and, and they get there in a hurry just to make it close, but he does make the, the line to make. And this is where they got to cash in. They were down here last time, right before halftime, through, through the interception. They got to come away and cash it in here. Barry hands off to Billings. Billings wrapped up. Too slow. He is stopped for no gain. In fact, might have lost yardage. Carson Parham leading the way again. Yeah, just, just too slow. It's telegraphed. This defense is too smart for that. Watch how long it takes. It's just too long. And, the, and then you've got guys coming off block. That Rowan Briggs is a man amongst boys. He's getting blocked, but still has enough to make the play. Rowan Briggs, Jackson Foster. Some dudes on these defenses, I'm telling you today. This has been fun to watch as an offensive guy. Barry goes right inside the five. Fights his way to about the three-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. Jackson Barry showing you his medal as he was not going to give up on the play. I'm telling you, I just want this guy on the last play of the game. If you need him, he's going to give you everything he absolutely has. But what I like most about it, these guys are trying to beat each other up. He's helping the opposing team up. That, that's what it's all about. You put your heart on the line. You try to get every inch you can. And they're knocking each other in the heads here, and he's going to help the guy up. That's what I'm talking about. Third and goal for the Eagles. Trailing by seven. Barry tries to sneak it up the middle. There's your guy. There's nothing there. It's Cooper Lands again. He meets Barry. That Parham, too. Parham's there. He might have been the first guy to watch, watch the penetration here. There's Parham there. He's the first guy, and then there's his, his mate, Cooper Lance, to clean it up. Well, can't say enough about Carson Parham. Coach Rodney Webb talked about it this week, talking about the toughness and the determination that his linebacker has. Well, you just got to think about the two missed opportunities. The two field goals. Talk about that when we come back. Yes, we will. 8.20 remaining in the game. A critical fourth down for Prosper. Come. Yeah, but this is a lot of food right here for $2.49. You go to all these restaurants. $10, please. $12, dollars please. $12, please. All these veggie places. It's a no brain. School is working out for you. Sonic Chicken Slinger. It's time to put 2020 in the rear view and get to the final days of the Ford built for the holidays sales event. It's your last chance for our best offers of the season across the Ford lineup. So hurry in today. The Ford built for the holidays sales event and soon. During the final days, get an F-150 with over 11,000 in total savings plus 1,000 in trade assist cash at your Texas Ford dealer. Would you rather eat in the car or eat at the dinner table at home? Rather eat in the car. You can turn on some tunes. Uh. Uh, dancing, eating. You know how weird we'd look if we did this at the kitchen table? Sonic Wacky Pack. Man, now we just having a good time. Yeah. Doug Anderson, Ladera McLean, and Chris Mikowski with you from McKinney ISD Stadium. Prosper's Eagles facing a fourth and goal, trailing by seven. With 8.22 remaining in the game. 
you got to go for it here, LD. But huh. the, the question Ooh. is, what is the play? <laughs> what do you do? Well, I, I know one thing. You cannot run the quarterback in the line again. <laughs> That's telegram. You can't do that. <laughs> this ball has to be a pass, and it has to be somewhere across the goal line. you got to have time to do it. Barry looks as that time. Scrambling. Still trying to buy time. Receivers trying to come open. Barry staying alive. Now will run. Will he be able to make it? No, he won't. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> Guyer's defense defends again. And Jackson Berry goes down at the three yard line. Ball over on downs. Boy, that is the story of the game. And this is here. They've had some red zone trouble today. Pass protection is best it's been the entire game. Jackson Berry cannot find anywhere to get rid of this ball. And even right here, I said, well, maybe he's got a shot to run it in. Tries to make that extra cut, and it's just too many bodies in the way for him to get to the goal line. Outstanding defense by the Geyer Wildcats. That, that is the story of the game right there. A play that seemingly would never end <laughs> finally <laughs> ended for the Gyro defense as they were able to take down Jackson Berry and now on first down deep in their own territory Stowers throws the ball away. Well, they can't get comfortable. The Gyro Wildcats, they can't sit back there and get careless with the ball and throw it up and you know put it on the ground. Certainly they, they've got to try to get first downs because this is turned into a field position type game, and if they don't give their punter any room, Prosper's going to be right back knocking on the door again with some decent field position. Second down and 10. Hand off Phillips, and Phillips plunges forward for two up to the five yard line, but that's going to bring up third down and eight. Yeah, I, I think, you know, Prosper going forward on fourth and goal. You got to say, hey, we've got the good enough defense. Even if we don't get it, we got a chance to get the ball back. There's still plenty of time. And we feel like our defense is going to bail us out like they've done the entire season and especially throughout these entire playoffs. And with this third and eight here, they very well could do that and get the ball back for their offense. Stowers. Throws one deep down the far sideline, incomplete. Pass was deep downfield intended for Jace Wilson, but it was well over his head. And now the Wildcats, like you talked about, LT, they're going to give Prosper good field position, having to punt on fourth down and eight from their own end zone. And, and really no threat to run the clock down. You've got two passes in that series there, stops the clock first and foremost and then you had a little chippy run that got a couple of yards and the way these punters have been punting I'm telling you it this sets up for prosper to set up return we've seen tyler bailey turn a return back we've seen him do it special teams may come up make a play here on his way and it will take a nice guy or roll all the way to near midfield 43 yard kick Prosper will take over at the Geyer 48-yard line. The question is, how many opportunities will Prosper's defense give their offense I'm telling you. without the offense capitalizing? I they, know. They, it, it, you've got to give credit to the Geyer defense for that, too, but that's a question at hand. And let's sit down to the field and check in with Chris. Like Anthony Anderson stars is a young, successful ad executive who's just trying to fit in with his own family. If you want multicultural comedy, look no further than Blackish. Weeknights at 6 right here on CW33. Seven minutes left in the game. Prosper trailing 10 to 3. Jackson Berry tossed to a wide open Tyler Bailey. And Bailey scooting down the near sideline. Penalty flag at the end of the run. But he is able to reach the Gower 37-yard line. Yeah, this is going to come back. Cameron Harpool 
This is going to be blocking in the back. He didn't really need to do anything. Tyler Bailey had a full head of steam. But this was thrown by the back judge, so he had a clear view of that. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number nine. 10-yard penalty for the spotter foul. Remains first down. Yeah, this is a play they ran in the first quarter, and Cameron Harpool actually popped wide open, and the quarterback overthrew him. So watch it here, right? You just got to kind of let it go. He's already got enough yards to get close to the first down marker. And then when you throw your hands up, that's the first signal that these <laughs> officials are going to look at as the last guy to hand in the cookie drop. So first down, it's first and nine. Barry, throw to Harpole. Picked up five. Up at the 42-yard line. You go back to that last stand by Geyer, that fourth and goal for Prosper that just played out like a soap opera <laughs> before Jackson Berry was finally tackled. And, and think about the two interceptions in the end zone and that play. How many times has Geyer stood on their own goal line and been able to keep Prosper out of the end zone today? Pretty amazing stuff from the Wildcat defense. And here they go again, this time pushing back Jacob Devaney. Cooper lands in on that play. Jordan Eubanks, the usual suspects. Yeah, yeah, here it is again. They just get to the point of attack quicker. They're just a little bit more physical at the line of scrimmage, and they're starting to win that head-to-head that -head battle. There's Jordan Eubanks there. Boy, he's got great size, 6'2", 215 pounds. Solid 40-yard dash, good, good runner to the football. They're down to four. Barry, open receiver, caught by Billings at the 30, stays on his feet, 20. Billings inside the 15, tackle of the 10. 32 yards, first and goal for Prosper. Now that was, that was a well-designed play. They only rushed three, so they're dropping eight in coverage, so this offensive line can actually handle this. And there's the scene, and that's a zone defense and Billings, the guy that needed to be the X Factor, comes up, makes a huge play, and that run after the catch was outstanding. Peyton Bowen with the stop. First and goal for Prosper, trailing by seven. Barry, toss to Billings. And Billings tackle at the five-yard line. Jake Fugit with the tackle. Oh, nice job there by Cameron Harpool and Jacob Devenny. Those two guys just created just a little bit of a wall, and Billings was able just to scoot around and get inside or get right at the five-yard line. Here we go again. Yeah, here we go again, right? <laughs> Prosper knocking on the door, as they seemingly have been all afternoon, but unable to find that end zone. This is where you got to pull out a play you hadn't shown all game. Harry, the toss to Bailey. Bailey tries to make something happen, but... Not much there, about a yard. Geyer once again up to the task. Wow, they're just good at all levels of the defense. The defensive line and linebackers don't get you, but these secondary guys, outstanding tacklers. They read and recognize what they're trying to get done to them and make the play. Ryan Yates, solid open field tackle. Now, it, this has got to be something going away from the middle of this defense. This has got to be out in space because that's the only way they'll be able to win. Hand off a sweep for Bailey. Fighting for yardage. Can't find anything. Oh Maybe a yard down to the three for Tyler Bailey. Eubanks, <laughs> Arquan Pope. Look at the pursuit. It's just a good team defense. Ryan Yates, he's the one that sets the edge at the quarterback position, so Bailey couldn't string this play out. He had to cut it back at the inside. Well, it's deja vu all over again, as they say, <laughs> for the Prosper Eagles. 332 left in the game and fourth and goal. You, you got to figure this is it. Because, uh, you know, the time is going against them now. Well, you can only you can only have so many so chances. Many. You 
You go back to the last possession for the Eagles. This same situation, fourth and goal. Barry had all day and then some. Poor Rowan Briggs had four chances at him, it looked like. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to do any and everything. This is where I thought maybe if he could come just more down to the bottom of the screen and run and make those guys chase him, but he got caught up with a bunch of bodies right there inside the five-yard line, didn't get it in. So if you've got anything up your sleeve, this is where you pull it out if you're the Prosper. This is where you do the Philly special. This is where you do double reverse, any, any and everything, because what you've done, <laughs> you played right into the hands of this defense, and that's trying to go at him. You've got to use some deception here. You've got to be able to get Jackson Berry free to where he can run or pass the ball. Berry takes the snap. Quick throw, and it's intercepted. There's penalty flags. And I think that Ryan Yates knows that it's not going to count Outside. as an interception. Defense number 42. Still to be enforced half the distance to the goal. Well, this fourth this down. changes the dynamic just a little bit. Yeah, look at that. You got a little bit of nerves there, getting a little lancy by that defense. They want to get that good jump. I don't think you can run this ball at all. I think you, you've got to do something on the perimeter. Fourth and goal again. Barry, hand off to Bailey. Bailey turns the corner. There it is. Touchdown. That's all great blocking, too. That's all it was. It, it's so funny in the biggest moment how fundamentals have to take over. And that time they win. That time they blocked everybody perfectly, and it created a little bit of an alley. And Tyler Bailey knows what to do. Watch this block out by the receivers. There's Devaney there, and they seal it, and it's done. Larson with the important extra point. It's good, and we are tied again in McKinney. Prosper 10. Geyer 10, three and a half minutes left of the game. There it is. You just try to get the momentum with the jet sweep. He's got the edge of the advantage. Eubanks can't get to him. Here it is. This is a great look here. This is what you kind of see for field level. And yes, blocking is superb. And it's a good run there by Tyler Bailey. Tyler Bailey and Cameron Harpole have been the offense along with Jackson Berry in these playoffs. Bailey, 19 catches, 219 yards, a couple of TDs. Harpole, 20 catches, 300 yards, and six TDs. And it's what Bailey did on the ground just a moment ago and has tied this ball game up with a two-yard touchdown run, eight-play drive. Let's send it down to the field and check in with Chris. No shock that Prosper would put the ball in Tyler Bailey's hand in that situation. Coach Brandon Schmidt has been on the job for 19 years at various stops, and he says he's one of the most outstanding athletes he's ever coached. Just dynamic and explosive. And remember, last week, he helped Prosper advance with his defensive effort as well, putting him in the secondary. He came up with two interceptions, a pass breakup, and seven tackles for Prosper as they beat Eaton, and he was crowned Dallas Morning News Defensive Player of the Week. And Chris, the week before that, in the game we did against Arlington Bowie, he had 11 catches for 121 yards and a touchdown. So, guy's been doing it on both sides of the field. Kickoff return across the 35 up to the 37-yard line, a 15-yard return for Geyer as Peyton Bowen is able to give the Wildcats pretty good field position. And now we see what Eli Stowers can do with the game on the line. 321 left in this contest. You know, he just hasn't looked like the Eli Stowers we've known. But, hey, these big-time players, they relish in these types of moments. And everything that's happened prior to this uh, last 321 left in the game can be wiped away if he could come out and lead his team down the field and get this lead here to maybe win the game. Stowers will hand off to Phillips. DJ Phillips up to the 42. Knocked out five yards there. And lest we not forget what we showed you at the very beginning of the game, 
Eli Stowers taking it in from a yard out with time expiring to give Geyer the lead and the win after the extra point over Prosper in their first meeting back in October. Phillips up to the 45, picked up three. Third down and two coming up. Could history be about to repeat itself? We don't know. That's a nice bit of running there by Phillips. Tough runs. Uh, these guys, these running backs are dire. They're not going to juke you. They're just going to run what they know to run. Stay on the track. Back to Phillips. Second effort for Phillips. Has him close to the first down, but I'm not sure he got it. I think they're going to mark him about a football short. He is short of the first down, and that brings up fourth and one for the Wildcats. Boy, it's just the play calling that you just want to, you just don't have the confidence in your quarterback, and he's arguably the best player on the, on the, on the field. <laughs> and you run consecutive plays. Well, look at this formation here. Single file. Yeah, look at this. For the Wildcats, now they break it. Stowers about to go under center, but a timeout call, and it's Geyer that calls the timeout with a minute 41, remaining in a tie ball game. Prosper and Geyer, the winner, moves on to the state semifinals in Class 6A Division II. Let's check in with Chris down on the field. High drama again between these two ball clubs. They first met October 30th at Children's Health Stadium in Prosper. Eli Stowers lining up with his team down by six. He powers into the end zone. A one-yard touchdown as time expires. That tied it at 23. Then Mike Mayfield adding the PAT. It was true. And Geyer with a 24-23 win in the regular season. Here we have reached the one minute 42 second mark of their second meeting of the season, and it still has not been decided. <laughs> to say that these two teams are evenly matched would be yeah. an understatement. Yeah, for the lack of scoring in this game, this has been fun. <laughs> I mean, the drama is uh, there. It's high been, drama for I sure. Mean, this has been this has been awesome, especially when you know the stakes behind it. Here they go again. Yeah, what formation. Geyer made the state final last year. They're trying to get back to the semifinals. Stowers on fourth down. They're going for it with Phillips. Phillips oh, runs into a pile, and he is gosh. short. He is short. <laughs> Whoa. Ciano and company hold on fourth down. And the Eagles will get the ball in a tie game with 138 to go. There's nothing else you can say about the defenses today. Watch the field by Ciano. Bang, right there. That is textbook. And there's Ryan Baderos, the free safety coming in to run support. There's Herman Lee, he's filling the gap. And there's Ciano again. Incredible. Unbelievable defensive performance by the Eagles. What a stand, and here we go. Jackson Berry with a chance to lead his team to victory. Picks up three on first down. Got one timeout remaining, Doug. Plenty of time. Second down and seven. Berry toss it to Devaney. And it's incomplete. Devin, he never had a handle on it. Yeah, he was trying to make a guy make him miss before he had control of the ball. But you see, they're trying to get the ball to the outside, just trying to attack. That's that's the only, I don't you know if you even call it a weak spot. That's the only way they've been able to have a little bit of offensive success. Brandon Schmidt. State champion coach from his days at Cedar Park. Trying to lead Prosper into the state semifinals. Barry takes off. And he's brought down. 
A tremendous tackle by Marquand Pope to bring up fourth down, and the Eagles huh. once again are in that fourth and long situation. There it is. Pass protection is pretty good, but there's a little bit of pressure by Briggs, and he felt it just a little bit, and he steps up. This is a great look here. Three-man rush. They're playing eight in coverage. You step up. And there's the spy technique there by Marquand Pope to just allow him to, or not allow him to get across the line of scrimmage. But man, oh man, fourth and seven. This is going to be fourth and seven tonight. I'm you, glad I'm in the booth. You've got to kick this ball, in, in my opinion. I'm, I'm going to just lay it out for you with 23 seconds left to go in this game. You don't take a chance of giving the ball to Geyer near midfield. You've, no. got, to, you've got to put it back deep in guard territory they haven't shown the ability to necessarily go downfield in a hurry this afternoon your defense has played tremendous you've got to kick this ball away put grant peck out there and go for overtime i 100 percent agree with you and I'm, I'm hoping the time out here is just to discuss protection because even if you do punt the ball you got to make sure you block everybody and anything coming free can hurt you yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that's the only play you, you do here. You don't want to give Guy a short field when he can possibly do a Hail Mary or something like that back the other way. What a ball game and what what a performance by two defensive units today that have really just been at the top of their game. I, I hadn't seen anything quite like it by two teams two defensive units usually it's one sided one defense just dominated but these two teams defensively have been equal and, and remarkably outstanding at the right times Grant Peck will be on to punt the Wildcats do not put anybody back to receive Peck's got a chance to try and spot this one Lands at the 10, bounces out of the 8. Tremendous punt by Grant Peck. Just what the Eagles needed. And now 17 seconds left in regulation. And Geyer will take over at their own 8-yard line. I don't think you can ask for anything better right there from Peck. That's exactly what they needed. 17 seconds left. And you know, as a defense, you, you, you got to tell yourself, hey, we just can't let anybody get by us. We got to make the sure tackles if it's up front. And as an offense, you got to protect the ball, too, because you don't want anything squirrely to happen. And I think the coach staff's going to take that judgment out right now and take the knee and go into overtime. That is certainly the way it appears as Stowers takes the snap and takes the knee and we are headed to overtime in the state quarterfinals. So you go back a couple of weeks to the area round of the playoffs for the Geyer Wildcats, and they've been in this situation. They beat Arlington 38 to 31 in a double overtime matchup. Well, they certainly are used to it, and I'm telling you, both these teams are battle tested. I mean, they've got grit as best as they can come. Coach Rodney Webb about to rally the guard troops as Brandon Schmidt is doing on the over other side for the Prosper Eagles. Going to overtime with a trip to the state semifinals on the line. Each team with a touchdown and a field goal in regulation. It was a 3-3 ball game through the first half. Third quarter saw Geyer score a touchdown to make it 10 to 3 that was Eli Stowers finding Jace Wilson and then Prosper was able to respond as the Eagles were able to score on a Tyler Bailey one yard touchdown run there's the touchdown from Jace Wilson Stowers with his best throw of the day yeah well with Jace Wilson for that TD and Here's Bailey taking it on that sweep. Turned the corner and was able to find the end zone to tie the ball game up at 10. Two head coaches meeting in midfield. 
about this. <laughs> hey guys, overtime it's rules. Amazing. It's oh. really amazing. Each team will get a possession from the 25 yard line. Mm -hmm. The visitor will still be able to call the coin toss. Winner of the coin toss gets to choose offense, defense, or direction. We'll play the entire overtime period in the same direction. After the second overtime period, you must go for two. And on the fifth overtime period, we'll have a try from the two yard line. Each team will get one timeout per try and per overtime period. Any questions? We're good. We're good. Here's the coin. Heads. State of Texas is tails. Heads. Your call. Heads. You heard heads. It's tails. Tails. We'll play defense first. This direction. Uh, we'll play defense. Uh, we'll we'll be be the we'll go down. And Prosper will go yes. towards the field house. Right to web sponge. We'll play defense first. Of course. Of course you will. That's the way it's done. <laughs> now let's send it down to the field and check in with Chris. Guys are pretty loose out there for the coin toss. Coach Webb approaching and saying, you know, instead of a coin flip, why don't we switch it up? Let's do paper, rock, scissors. <laughs> and Brandon Schmidt stoic and saying, this really had to be this way, right? We've been so even, so good on both sides. So I think these guys have a lot of respect towards each other. I, I think we expected the same. It, looking back on that October matchup, so even. It's really incredible testament to this district. Remember, we were there in Prosper for that game against McKinney Boyd, and, and Prosper needed to win that just to get to the playoffs. Here they are playing their district rival with a spot in the final four on the line, and we've reached overtime. What a ball game, and here we go with overtime. Prosper will start on offense. And the gamer, Jackson Berry, to lead his team if you're the Eagles, if nothing else, you got to come away with points. So do not turn the ball over. That's that's mission number one. Mission number two, you try to find that end zone. Devaney with the handoff is not going to find even the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard. Second down and 11 coming up. Uh, just been tough sledding the entire game to run the ball and this is a familiar look his penetration all the black shirts around the the line of scrimmage and there's big number nine again Briggs leading the way Rowan Briggs has had a big day in our defense second down and 11 Barry sends Devaney out of the backfield and will throw his way Devaney immediately met and dropped by Darius Goodlow. Good tackle. Boy, Goodlow has been on the money this afternoon, making some open field stops, and that was a huge one. It's just been a beautiful defensive game. Everybody fundamentally sound. Watch Goodlow size him up, break down, and take his legs out. Textbook tackle. Now third and 11 facing the Eagles. Yeah, they really haven't tried the middle of the field, and I'm talking about that 15 to 18 yards down the middle of the field. Marquan, Marquan Pope has just been right there, taking away that middle pass. Barry looks to throw. Now will take off. There's a penalty flag as Barry is dragged out of bounds. Yeah, that's a flag. And now another flag. There was a flag during the play, and then there was a dead ball flag, so. Ricky Heron and his bunch will have to sort it out. Could be a big break for the Eagles. Yeah, that umpire threw that flag like it was a hold. And then we saw the unnecessary roughness out of bounds. Let them sort that out. That's two fouls on the play, both on the defense. Holding defense number one. That 10 yard penalty will be forced from the end of the run. After the play, personal foul, a necessary roughness, defense number three. That penalty will also be enforced after this to the goal. Wow. First down, Prosper. Wow. Whoa. What a tremendous break for the Prosper Eagles. Two penalties going against Geyer, both of them enforced, and now. Osborne is going to be inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, there's a little extra shove. 
I'm at the end of that. Jaden Powell, number three. They spot the ball at the six yard line for the Eagles, first and goal. And that's huge because Prosper wasn't going anywhere no. against this guy or defense. Yeah, you're thinking about Prosper having to kick a long field goal. Now they've got a first and goal just outside the five yard line. Barry, keeper, inside the five, puts his head down toward the end zone. Touchdown, Jackson Barry. It took 48 minutes and then some, but Jackson Berry finds the end zone. Here's the read power. They haven't ran it much today. And the first time they do it, it is successful. Just a little misdirection was enough to create great blocking angles. And when you've got the gamer back there pulling the trigger, anything is possible. Right now, Prosper Eagles looking pretty good with that defense now. Extra point good, 17-10. Prosper striking first in the overtime, but now it's Geyer's turn. Yeah, here it is. You got the lead blocker out in front, big number 83. That's Braden Reimer. And it was enough. This is great action. Look at all the misdirection going on. You've got the read going on, then the quarterback decides to keep it. The ball popped loose at the end, but he had already broke the plane. And Jackson Berry scores the touchdown to put Prosper ahead in the overtime, and what else would you expect, LD? Yeah, here we, here we go, right? And Eli Stowers, it, it's your turn. You, you've got to get your team going, and he's been relatively quiet and held in check this entire game. It's time for him to show up now. Well, we talked about it at the very beginning of the game this afternoon. Both these guys, they find ways to win. Stowers. Pass, Ulrich. Ulrich to the 15-yard line. Call it the 16, so it's second down and one. And yes, indeed, we see if Stowers can match Barry. Here he goes. Take it off, stopped at the 15. What a tackle. It'll be a first down, but a good tackle on the play by Leighton White. Towers puts Allridge on his right. Hand off to him. Gain of a couple. That's Leighton White again. He's one of these reserve linebackers. Second down at nine. Line to gain is the five yard line for Denton Geyer. Off in a reverse and back to Stowers. Throw it for the end zone wide open. Man, it's knocked oh. away. Wow. Caleb Miles, what a recovery to knock the ball away. He actually caught the ball, but he was out of the back of the end zone. How about that guy or going with trickery in overtime? And it almost works if not for Caleb Miles. Wow, this is fantastic recovery. He's wide open right now with the ball in sails and hangs just a little bit. And that might be the play of the game right there by Caleb Miles because he was beat, but he makes the play, doesn't cause any kind of interference. Dylan Rivera was wide open, but what a play. Third and timeout. nine. Dyer. And there's a timeout on this the is field. The only timeout for the first overtime. I want to take you back, if we can. <laughs> and we've shown it a few times today, but that first meeting in October and that game winner, the touchdown from Eli Stowers, because I want to show you something at the end of that play. Here you go. This is the play. Look at number 13, Caleb Miles. He's the only guy that's got a shot at Eli Stowers, and Stowers just ran right over him. And he's probably thinking, man, I just cost my team, and he's undersized by 60 pounds. Yeah, but who was the one that just made the play Telling you. to keep Geyer out of the end zone? Caleb Miles, a little bit of redemption yeah. for number 13 this afternoon. 
you, you can't make that kind of stuff up, folks. I'm telling you, what a play. I, I mean, I can't say how well <laughs> he just came back and knocked that pass. Dylan Romero was wide open. The only thing covering him was the turf. That was the only thing. Here we go, third and nine. Man. A little different look here. They've got Ty Aldridge. He's in the slot at the top of the screen. Stowers standing, now runs to the 10, the 5. Stowers diving, reaching out. Does he have it? He does. Touchdown, Geyer. Oh, boy. Overtime is about the playmakers, and Jackson Berry, Eli Stowers, those are the guys. Uh, this play was designed the entire time for him to keep it. You got all the formation to the wide side, and then it's set up for him to go one on one again with Caleb Miles. This thing's still going. <laughs> still going indeed. 17 all at the end of the first overtime. Yeah, look at that. It's just a, it's a called quarterback draw the entire time. You give the illusion that you're back to throw play side. But it's a quarterback draw out the back door, and it's set up beautifully, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. There's 13 again. He's having flashbacks at that moment. Not enough to get him out of the end zone. Let's send it to Chris. Everything we see from Stowers is even more remarkable, thinking about the path he took to get to this point. He watched most of last year's state championship game on crutches, knocked out on the opening drive. It turned out to be a torn PCL. He had to have surgery. Rodney Webb said it was awesome to watch his work ethic during his recovery. Over the summer, he was limited somewhat in the weight room and with agility work, but quarterback mechanic work, he was a full go. Webb said that the season being delayed five weeks really helped. Had it started on time in August, Stowers probably wouldn't have played those first two games, but with games being pushed back, he didn't end up missing a single one. A, a real testament to his work ethic and dedication toward his own rehabilitation as he was able to come back from that injury. And now, you know, we, this is what we talked about at the beginning of the game. It took the entire game plus overtime to see it, but Jackson Berry and Eli Stowers are, are the ones that are deciding this ball game. They're going to be there. And at the end of the day, those two guys are going to make it happen. Stowers now back out there on offense as Geyer will have the ball first in the second overtime period. His pass out to the flat on the far side inside the 20 yard line, a seven yard gain for Jace Wilson. And that's one pass we haven't seen much today, just trying to get a screen out to Jace Wilson. Everything has been 50 50 balls to Wilson, but this time they get it with the screen. Stowers, touchdown! Back-to-back -back TDs for Eli Stowers, and Geyer has put the onus on Prosper. 23-17 in the second overtime. Now, it's, it's been a tough game for him running the ball, but watch this here. It's blocked beautifully. They have numbers. Your quarterback is a run threat, and right there they gash him. He doesn't need a whole lot of space. Mayfield's extra point is good. A seven-point lead for Geyer. And now it's Prosper's turn to try and answer. Hey, here it is again. You, you've got the numbers. That running back is an extra guy to block, and your quarterback keeps it. Tough to stop. E even for that defense, they've been great the entire game. Look at Arciano sealed up. He can't get back inside. You're just starting to see the offenses now execute. They're blocking the guys in front. Defenses could be getting a little bit tired, and, and rightfully so. They, they've been out there on the field a, an awful lot. But it's Jackson Berry's turn now. Jackson Berry. Has led this team throughout the season, throughout his career. And now he takes off 20-yard line, 15. 
12 yard run and a first down and it's like Jackson Berry looked over at Eli last hour and said hold my gator up because here I go that's exactly right here goes the gamer again didn't like what he saw downfield says okay I've got a little bit of room let me get this a little bit closer take the pressure off my coaching staff to call the right play Jacob Debony in the backfield with Barry. There's a penalty flag as Barry throws it. And incomplete. There was a chance for it to be intercepted, but I don't know that it would have mattered. There are a couple of penalty flags down on the play. Boy, this has been an absolute war. I mean, these guys are giving any and everything that they have. There are two fouls on the play. Holding. Offense number 75. Outside the defense. Kills while set. Replay first down. So the Eagles catch a little bit of a break there as that ball could have very easily been intercepted by Ryan Yates. First down as the penalty's offset. Well, that was a holding on holding on Jacob Mummy. He he was a little gimpy getting off the ground. There's big number 75 there. You, you got to be full strength against this defensive line. You, you hope he can hold up and, and hold his own at that left guard position. Barry, quick toss. Good throw to the five-yard line. Cameron Harpole with the catch. Harpole, who has been just dynamite in the playoffs, quiet today, but that's a huge grab for him. A yard away from a... First down. That's a big time throw, big time route. We saw a little bit of that in the first half. Garpool starts a tough, tough cover for any defensive back. Barry in trouble, and down he goes. He was tackled by Rowan Briggs. As Barry just had nowhere to run and Briggs, that defensive end who's been so solid today, makes another huge play. Boy, these defensive ends have been outstanding, and Briggs now starting to really assert himself. They get off the block so well. They've done it the entire game. Big third down. And yeah, third and five facing the Eagles now. And a whistle before the play. Timeout was called. Prior to the snap. Timeout. Geyer. So this right before the snap. Timeout of this overtime period. Geyer calls the timeout. That's their timeout for this overtime period. And Prosper left to mull things over on third and five here in the second overtime period. The winner advances to the state semifinals in Class 6A Division II. They play the winner of the ball game that's just getting underway over at Globe Life Park in Arlington between Cedar Hill and Rockwall Heath. And right now that ball game starting the second quarter, it's tied at seven between the Longhorns and the Hawks. Earlier today, Carroll advanced in 6A Division I with a win over Euless Trinity. Metroplex teams trying to make it back to that state championship. Yeah, a lot of great teams too. A lot of a lot of teams that can play playoff football, and that means great defense, complementary offenses, and these two teams in front of us right now are no exception to that by any means. Harry on third and five, throwing hard pull. He's inside the five. He's down at the four-yard line, maybe the three, and that should be enough for a first down. What a catch. What a catch in traffic. And this pass is high, but you got to sell yourself out and go up and make the play for your team and bail your quarterback out. Watch hard pull here. He's in traffic, Doug. Ball's a little high. He reaches back, and then now he's just fighting to get every and little bit of yards he can get. What is the ball, ball game right here, LD? It's fourth down and one. Oh, no. Ball start. Roy Offense Sanson. number 67. Five yard penalty. Late fourth down. A oh, killer. A killer of a penalty for the Prosper Eagles. Turns a fourth and one into a fourth and six.
Well, Jackson Berry's been in these spots before. Here it is, fourth down. Got to make the three-yard line. And Prosper will use their timeout. Yeah. Timeout, Prosper. They're only charge timeout of this overtime period. By the two, <laughs> these two teams, man. <laughs> I tell you what. I don't, I don't, I tell you what, I, I will say this in all honesty. We, there might be better teams left in the Texas high school football playoffs, but you're not going to find two grittier I know. teams yeah. than the two that are on the field here. It, it, it's been really a heavyweight bout. That's it. That's the only thing I can think of is it's just two teams throwing haymakers, and it's been defensively. Yeah, I, I know that, but they have not bowed down to one another. And quite fittingly, it's going to come down to this play here of fourth and six that will decide this game. Two teams evenly matched, man. This has been fun to watch. And you, you won't find another two teams that's going to play as hard as these two here. Fourth and six. And it comes down to this. Jackson Berry alone in the backfield. Five receivers. Barry throws for the end zone. It is caught. Wow, you got Touchdown, <laughs> Cameron Harpole. <laughs> Are you kidding? Woo! And now the score is 24 to 23. Geyer, the same score that the Wildcats won. Back in October. Larson set to send it to a third OT. And he does. That might have been the most difficult kick he's had all season long right there. Cameron Harpole, the San Diego State signee, comes up with a magical catch. Well, they've killed him when they've gone to an empty set. And right off the bat, these defensive backs' antennas have to go off. When they go empty, it's either a slant to either side. You've got to cheat inside against Harpole. He's tough to cover when he runs that little skinny post or a little quick slant. Great job by Jackson Berry to look off that safety to create a little bit of space for his receiver to run that slant. That's an outstanding execution by two senior players. Well, and what amazes me about these two teams, and particularly about these two quarterbacks, is it doesn't matter how well or how poorly you play through 48 minutes. Nope. It comes down to winning time, and these guys just make plays. They just figure out a way to get it done. Down to the field, we'll check in with Chris. Coach Schmidt allowed me to have a really nice conversation with Cameron Harpole earlier this week. He told me about how he and Jackson Berry grew up playing baseball and football together since they were very little. Best of friends and two guys who, since they were that small, dreamed about doing this kind of thing for Prosper. Remember, until this year when Rock Hill opened, Prosper was a one high school town. So they had dreams of doing this exact thing for the Eagles in the Texas high school playoffs. Perry, the throw, hard pull, just out of his reach. Second down and 10 coming up. Uh, you, you saw him come right back to the empty set again. And this is where you can identify a lot of different things, Doug. Not only can you identify the pressure, but you can also identify the coverage in the back end. And you're going to have some nice matchups. You saw it there with the touchdown, and you almost saw it there with Harpool running the flag run. Prosper won state in 2008 as a 3A high school. Denton Geyer champions in 2012 and 2013 and a finalist last year these two teams do have those championship dreams and right now pressure coming with that guy or defense making things hard on jackson bear yeah jacob mummy couldn't reach over and and stop carson parham to apply the pressure and that's the one thing too if they send an extra guy you're going to have a free releaser also, but mubby has got to pick up that guy there. Jackson Barry could have had a little bit more time to make a better throw. Third and 10. Triple overtime in McKinney. Barry, the throw. Tipped. 
incomplete. It was bobbled by Tyler Bailey. He was trying to bring it in and just couldn't get it done. It falls to fourth and 10, and here comes the field goal unit. Well, this is not a gimme. No, it is not. By any means. You're asking Brad Larson to make a 42-yard kick. That's on a good hash for a right-footed kicker. Hold is down. The kick is blocked. And it's coming back the other way. Fugit with it at midfield. Jaden Fugit still running at the 40. Fugit going across field to the 35. And now pushed out of bounds near the 25-yard line. Jaden Fugit. But who got the block? The Baylor Bear, Cooper Lance, who's been so huge this afternoon. Got his paws on that kick from Larson and sent it packing. Did you expect anything else from either one of these teams? He just mulls over. I think that's Jacob Mummy. He, he's been banked up, and he's, he's almost being a liability now. It's just tough for him to block Carson Lance, and he blocks that with ease. So in the third overtime, the task is very clear. Score any kind of points if you're Geyer, yeah. and you advance to the state semifinals. Does this defensive prosper have one more stop in them? We're going to find out here pretty quick. Stowers has Phillips in the backfield. First and 10 from the 25. Hand off to Phillips. And he is quickly stacked up. A yard gained on the play. This Prosper defense isn't done yet. Yeah, that's a nice job. Martez Harris, the nose tackle in his defense, number 35. He's He's been quiet this game. And that time, he, he won that matchup head-to-head -head with Joe Radovan, the center. Second down and nine. Stowers the keeper. 15, 10, Stowers to the five yard line. First and goal. 19 yard run by Eli Stowers and 6'4, 220 pounds, almost unstoppable. Yeah, and it was well blocked too, Doug. They, they, they've got the bodies leaning on this defense now. You see Herman Lee, he gets lost in the wash there and knocks Boyd. I'm telling you, it's a mountain of a man, and once he gets his hands on you, the running lanes start to part open, and Eli Stowers get his team even closer now. First and goal, the Wildcats. Stowers, he's fighting, fighting, marching toward the end zone. The pile into the end zone, touchdown, Geyer wins. will advance to the state semifinals in class 6A, Division II with a 30 to 24, three overtime victory. And speaking of threes and overtimes, how about three touchdowns in overtime for Eli Stowers? Yeah, I've been saying it for years. The big time players make the big time plays in the most critical moments. And this is just a sheer determination and will to not be stopped to make his team advance to the next round of the state finals. State playoffs, I should say. An unbelievable finish to an unbelievable ball game.
Geyer wins it in McKinney this afternoon, 30 to 24. And they survive and advance in the Texas high school football playoffs. A lot more coming your way from McKinney next on CW 33. Who is USAA made for? It's made for this guy, a veteran who honorably served. And it's made for her. She's serving now. We made it for all branches and all ranks. Whether they served one tour or made a career of it. We also made USAA for military spouses and their kids. USAA is easy to work with and can save you money on auto, home, and renter's insurance. Become a member today. Call us for a quote. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. to find the perfect tree. We're going skating. We're going to Nanos. Wherever you go this holiday, Chevy can help you get there. Which is why we're making our Chevy employee discount available to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. So wherever you go, happy holidays from Chevy. Now through January 4th, use the Chevy employee discount for everyone to get over $6,800 below MSRP on this Equinox. Hurry, the employee discount for everyone ends January 4th. At Rooms to Go, today and tomorrow are the last two days to find valuable New Year's Day bonus coupons in your newspaper or online at roomstogo.com. Good today and tomorrow only. Coupons that save you big money on great looking furniture. Now is the perfect time to shop and get extra savings with your bonus coupons. Plus, to make buying easier, finance interest free for five years. That's today and tomorrow only. Bonus coupon savings and five year interest free financing at Rooms to Go. Life's full of little accidents. And the Hyundai Tucson helps make sure they stay little by alerting you if you drift out of your lane and even gently correcting your steering. Because unlike your favorite shirt, you are irreplaceable. Hyundai, the longer you look, the more there is to like. Get 0% APR or lease the Tucson for $199 a month or get $32.50 cash back. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Your mother is a special lady, and on her special day, you promised her a special celebration. But if slow upload speeds won't let your video call through oh. because you have cable, just remember, you're not a bad son. You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 20 times faster upload speeds than cable. Get AT&T Fiber, plans starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. Experience the CW33 High School Football Showdown on your digital device. Fridays, watch live football on CW33.com and the CW33 app. Take part with your pick for player of the game and rewatch your local favorite team on demand at CW33.com. Okay. Come on, guys, let's go. Anything else you need for your dorm room? Like some more hugs for mommy? Oh, no more hugs. Let's go! Hey, son. Never get enough See hugs. you in four years. But Thanksgiving, I said four years. Sunday at 6 on CW33. Go! The Southwest Kia drive of the game. The winner by Eli Stowers in the third overtime. Give the Geyer Wildcats a 30 to 24 victory as they advance to the state semifinals in Class 6A Division II. Stowers, LD, three overtime periods, three touchdown runs. That's why the young man who's going to Texas A&M is considered one of the best in the state. Boy, he is, and he just rose to the occasion. I didn't think he had his A game, but the big time players make the big time plays in the big time moments. And he certainly did. Rodney Webb and the Geyer Wildcats are on their way to the state semifinals. We've got more from McKinney ISD coming your way on CW33. We're going to find the perfect tree. We're going skating. We're going to Nanos. Wherever you go this holiday, Chevy can help you get there. Which is why we're making our Chevy employee discount available to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. Not a cent more. So wherever you go, Happy holidays from Chevy. Use the Chevy employee discount for everyone to get over $5,200 below MSRP on this Trax. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. Get new floors during Empire Today's gigantic 75% off sale. That's carpet, hardwood, vinyl, and laminate. 75% off. Empire makes getting beautiful new floors easy. See samples in your home. 
get a free estimate and have your floors professionally installed. Update your floors with Empire and get 75% off carpet, hardwood, vinyl, and laminate. Schedule now. 800-588-2300 Empire Today. Cool on you. The moment you realize something is truly luxury is the moment you put it to use. Get exceptional offers on the Infinity QX80 during the Infinity Winter Sales Event. Finance the Infinity QX80 at 0% APR for 60 months and receive two years of complimentary scheduled maintenance. Hey, I've got this friend who has a friend whose friend's friend is a buyer at the dump, and she told me how they really do it. When they see a good deal, they buy it all. Sometimes it's so much it doesn't even fit in their warehouse, but a deal's a deal. They go direct to the source and cut out all unnecessary costs, only buying the good stuff. They know that if they don't pay full price, you don't pay full price. So shop the dump and find that special piece for your home. To the dump, to the dump, to the dump, dump, dump. The holidays are full of tradition, but it's time they got a technology update from Hyundai. And thanks to the savings you'll still find during the last days of Hyundai holidays, you'll discover a new Hyundai will make your new year very merry indeed. Ooh. Hurry to the final days of Hyundai holidays. Now get 0% APR for 60 months on the 2021 Kona or up to 3000 in savings. Visit buyhyundai.com today. So why'd you abandon Beverly? I ain't abandoned nobody. It was just time to come home. My family, my community, they needed me. One last celebration before we become rivals again. Just be prepared. There's gonna be some deep resentment there. It's gonna blow up in everyone's faces. Good luck scraping the team together. These youngins are about to change the game. Everybody's depending on me. The only reason you back here is to fix what you broke. So fix it. Season premiere January 18th on CW33. Well, if today's any indication, 2021 is going to be a much better year. <laughs> 30 to 24, the final score in three overtime periods. And the player of the game, Eli Stowers, you mentioned it, LD. His A game throughout most of this contest wasn't there, but come overtime when his team needed plays, he was there to get it done. You just feel like if you could just give him some more chances, he was going to figure it out. And, and find a way and, and all the great players just have that knack of doing it and he sees the moment Doug and he sees it most prominently in overtime to get his team home and not only is he a great athlete but a great kid academic all-state and a tremendous sportsman as well congratulations to Eli Stowers and the Gower Wildcats moving on to the semifinals after a 30-24 win over Prosper How does a chicken sandwich become a Whataburger spicy chicken sandwich? Is it by slathering it in a fiery sauce or adding some crazy hot toppings? Nah. If the chicken in a chicken sandwich wants to be spicy, it has to come from the inside. By marinating it in spices, frying it up, then cooling it off with fresh veggies, all on a new brioche bun. Good thing flavor can come from within. Good thing there's the new limited time spicy chicken sandwich at Whataburger. Available by dine-in, drive through curbside, and delivery. Some places have low prices, but at Kroger, we go lower than low on food that's fresher than fresh. Get more ways to save with personalized coupons, fuel points, and great deals for prices that are even lower than the leading competitors' everyday low. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Finally home. <sighs> okay, let's go. Come on. Yeah. Welcome to the final days of Toyotathon. Here for a great deal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the wait is over. Oh, Camry. <gasps> yes. During Toyotathon, get $2,000 customer cash or qualified buyers get 0% APR financing for 72 months on a new 2020 Camry. Hurry in today. You can get a great deal too at Toyotathon, but it all ends January 4th. Toyota, let's go places. The Simpsonian, where memorable Simpsons moments come to life. Oh, Moe, you wrecked this. Where has that word been all my life, Dad? No! 
The Simpsons. Tonight at 5 on CW33. Family Guy is a picture of affection. We can play charades. You mean like your marriage? I told you that in confidence. A picture of America's funniest family. Crazy. Family Guy. Tonight at 8 on CW33. Triple overtime thriller between the Geyer Wildcats and the Prosper Eagles. Won by Geyer this afternoon, 30 to 24. And for the second year in a row, Rodney Webb will take a team to the state semifinals in Class 6A. Last year, it was the Rockwell Yellow Jackets. They had their season come to an end here at McKinney ISD Stadium against the Duncanville Panthers, a game we broadcast. And this year, his Geyer Wildcats will play either Cedar Hill or Rockwell Heath right here next week at McKinney ISD Stadium. But what a tremendous job he's done in his first year as the Geyer Wildcats head coach. It's It's been fantastic. And anytime you've got that defense and, of course, arguably one of the best players in the state of Texas, Eli Stowers, you're, you're going to have a recipe for success. But I'm going to make the cliche comment. I really hate that either one of these teams had to lose today. Honestly, these two teams deserve to go on to the next round. They left it all out on the line. And my heart goes out to the Prosper Eagles team. They played a fantastic game, just not their day. And credit to the Geyer Wildcats to advance and survive, man. That's what it's all about. And so both of the representatives that are still standing from the DISD find themselves in the state semifinals. Ryan, of course, winning over Highland Park. Geyer winning today over the Prosper Eagles. I want to thank everyone that was a part of this one today, our entire Jeff Watts Productions crew for the outstanding work that they always do. Down on the sideline, Chris Mikoski today. Up in the booth for our statistician, Robert Walton, and my broadcast partner, LaDaren McClain. I'm Doug Anderson. So long for McKinney. We will see you next week in the state semifinals.